Hi everybody, Mature Simmer here, loading up into On Air Airline Manager to get going on our second group here, working on Mature Simmer Air here. So we're going to enter the world. So again, you know, a lot more classy transitions. It's the only additional sound other than your flight is being monitored with On Air that I've seen. So. What I'm going to try to do is, as I've slept on it and thought about it, I'm going to go ahead and run the level 2 mission. But what I'm hoping is, at minimum, it's going to show me the flight information without passing forward, You know, meaning that it's going to freeze because it tells me it's leveling up and then we don't see what happens right when you end a flight. And that I can't share that with you. I'm hoping it's going to do that on the first flight. And, you know, once again, I don't know if we get no rewards until we're done with both legs. So it's going to be interesting how that works out. So one thing that definitely is intriguing, because obviously I was on this map yesterday and so forth, so there's nothing that obviously loads this any faster. But at this point, while this is loading, I guess I'll get my plane loaded into KMRC, or I won't. So, again, just things to know, nuances, that, uh, you know, I've got these on the same screen, so I can obviously check. But, yes, I've noticed NeoFly, or I keep calling it NeoFly, on air will kind of lock up the ability for the simulator to do anything. It freezes the simulator for a bit while it's updating or so forth, which I guess as long as it doesn't crash is okay. It's just something to be aware of. It is interesting. I see the first leg is also allowed to be AI if we had wanted or been able to do that. So in the future, what that might do is just basically mean that you can get everything flown and then you just have to fly the last leg yourself. There we go. So, and now it, like I said, successfully connected. It also had the earth gripped for some reason. I'm not sure why. So I haven't spawned into this airport because... Uh, let's see, we've just got ramps. Just trying to figure out what the best place is. There's probably no best place. So what we can see here is we're going from KMRC to M05, which is Cothersville Memorial, it looks like, 267 feet, and it's a size 1, so it's smaller than we are because we're a size 2. So I'm guessing, again, this may be a grass field or something like that. Uh, and here we can see the distance is 127, and then the distance is 131. So, you know, we're going quite a ways, but we're certainly getting paid a lot more. So the benefit of this is, you know, and, and now I understand how I got the 1,000 XP last time when I was like, why did I get this bonus? The job it spawned was a level 1 job, so it was basically the same thing. And I'm guessing what starts happening is now level 3 is probably going to have 3 legs, and level 4 will have 4 legs, and so forth. And, he, and the legs may be a lot longer, because again, this plane can fly 600 nautical miles. It's just going to take a long time to do that. So we'll see how things go, and again, I may jump off the course of the leveling up jobs. But for now, as we're trying to test and move a little bit quickly... I think it's helpful to do that. You'll notice up here too that it has high tour jobs. This also has tours in it as well, similar to what the virtual airlines are. So like my NASCAR 2022 tour that I have on the channel is an example of that. But basically it, it does that within on air where you're able to fly these various legs and it will just track you through those and obviously give you that capability and the nice thing is like people can submit their own tours so that may be something that I may take a look at uh, just to see because I believe you just have to build it 
I don't know if you have to do anything more than that. I know I the, the thing I read on it was, you know, you can test it, you can do things like that. So I don't know if you have to fly it yourself once before you release it publicly, or if you're just able to put one together and go forward. So that may be something we explore in the seven days as well. And that would kind of be, you know, a offshoot, obviously, you know, a bonus episode per se. But anyway, uh, we've got this set. So I'm going to go ahead, whoops, I'm going to this flight. So I'm going to start this flight. And then it's going to prepare the aircraft. So this should all be the same. Now I can go ahead and use uh, Simbrief here. So I'm going to do that. All right, so I'm assuming because I haven't yet gone ahead and done anything with tying Simbrief together that I'm going to have to do something, but let me see what happens. Okay, please type in your... Okay, so it's the Simbrief alias. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and buy some fuel. That is what actually Simbrief is suggesting that I do, and that may make sense because this airport may not have fuel available, and what would really be stupid is to to get stuck because I can't. So we're going to validate fuel and payload, which we always have to do. And I think I can go ahead and fly now. All right, so there we are. Hide my yokes, as always. So the sim didn't say anything, uh, you know, that, hey, your flight is being tracked by on air. So we're going to go ahead and get things going here. Now, I'm hoping it's tracking because it's interesting that it's not giving me any indication that I'm here, and I'm wondering if it's because the engine's not on. So I'm going to turn on the beacon light because I know we need to do that. And then we'll go ahead and turn this on because I need to verify this first. Your flight will be monitored until you land and shut down the engines. All right, so there you go. So basically, it doesn't speak until you start the engine. So I could have certainly gone ahead and, and gotten things in, but the flight plan's not going to be that complicated. So early morning here. Pretty sweet-looking situation there, I would say. All right, and then we're moving along here. And then hopefully we won't have any issues of going too quickly. Let me go down a little bit. Because, you know, it'd be a shame to lose some of the, the points we've got. So it's interesting because it's literally trying to figure out how long it would take me to get there right now. And with the speed we're going, it's telling me it'll take me. Well, it's, it's, I guess we're... We must be speeding up because the time is going down. But yeah, now that I've slowed down, it's five hours and uh, six minutes. Although now it changed to one hour, two minutes, because maybe it sensed I was taxiing. I'm not sure. So we are going to have to set our altimeter, I noticed. I didn't go ahead and set myself for 4,000 feet. So we're going to need to do that. So before we enter the runway, I'm going to go ahead and hold here and work on that. All right, the other thing I realized is I don't have flaps set for takeoff, so that would make things a bit more interesting too. But at this point, we should be able to go get ourselves on the runway, and hopefully take off. So again, this is going to be a pretty lengthy flight. Yesterday was, you know, 90 miles. This is obviously less than that, or more than that, um, almost 130. It's 127 it's showing, so uh, obviously I'll probably not show a ton of that. Feedback uh, would be appreciated. 
of you know what what is interesting for folks to see but what I was trying to get together and say was yeah let me know what you feel would be helpful or enjoyable whoops over speeding now I'm in the red line so let me back down a bit for these episodes on you know do you want to see a, a, an hour-long flight and we're just kind of going along and obviously I'll probably be talking less we'll just you know look around periodically when something seems interesting otherwise we're kind of just sitting and looking out the front window and making sure nothing unexpected happens on our PFD in front of us and, and we'll go from there but at this point since I kind of don't have feedback I don't know that an hour and three minutes of flight time uh, just sitting and watching the propeller go and so forth is going to be that compelling the other thing I was thinking about I suppose before I sign off because uh, it would be great to have input uh, Neofly is a little simpler, but I feel there's m much more variation and so forth that I'm seeing available to me here and on air. And if I ultimately decide that I'm going to use this in some capacity, because I've not discounted the possibility of, of using both Neofly and on air, I just think it might not make a lot of sense to do that. Uh, just simply because, once again, if I've got a paid version of something, uh, using a free version doesn't seem to be the best use of of my time in that case. If I'm going to fly a career job, I'd probably want to do it within the the appropriate system. So, I mean, the little bit I've learned in this this piece but yeah what I was getting at sorry so I'm, I'm digressing which unfortunately happens with my stream of consciousness audio sometimes is that if I then did a career and, and said hey I'm going to do on air I may in essence start over and start a new series and that this may almost be self-contained as kind of a, a mini-series to test it and make a decision but I wouldn't necessarily continue because I may find like that buying the plane right away wasn't wasn't what I really should have done I should maybe I should have rented because the other thing that I'm not seeing and I looked around a little bit last night for is I can't seem to find something as clear as the logs in some of the other career mods that show me like the landing fees and all of that and that may have come up on the screen when the flight ended that then I uh, didn't see because I had clicked off in the level to go to the level job uh, you know because there's links that that show up there when that comes up and it basically then took me away from the screen I was on which was kind of the flight ending screen so some of that may be there but what I'm wondering is like now that it's been overnight and it's the next day like was I charged some sort of an airport fee or something for just like like a hangar fee or something for having a plane there so I'm gonna go ahead and fly and get closer and we'll join up and again any comments on what you think would be helpful because I don't know, I don't know how how folks would prefer to to see any kind of a career series. I mean, is it similar to what I was doing in FS Economy, where it's like, all right, here's the job, and then quickly cut to, okay, I've landed, and here's where it sits, and you're just literally seeing that. But given the length of time, you know, and and so forth, it's, it's these are taking. You know, I'm not going to have that many. I mean, I suppose, again, if I lump together a week, like I was doing uh, in FS Economy, that that would work. Right, right now in Neofly, I've kind of been showing every flight as its own episode, but because they're, short, they're shorter. But um, what this seems, I mean, I guess what I would say that I, I did kind of think about is this seems to 
press toward longer flights pretty quickly, where obviously I've got a lot of little 15 nautical mile, 20 nautical mile jobs that Neofly was giving me as I started. And this, well, I shouldn't say this, the shortest job I was able to see when I looked at the end of the last episode was about 85 nautical miles which is, you know, beyond even what I was normally doing. I think because there were so many jobs below 50, I think I had my search capped at like 50 nautical miles because with that Cessna 152, you know, that was still going to be a pretty lengthy flight. But what I'm thinking this is going to do, because I wouldn't be surprised for my level 3 flights if suddenly it goes ahead and says... You know, you've you've got 300 nautical miles per leg, and again, you've got three of them, so that I may need to fly like a thousand nautical miles altogether. And so my goal right now, because as I said, I've got a little bit more time, is I'm going to use as much time as I can to focus on on air, just to start to see what happens. Because what I'm not clear on is. How do I open new job types? And I think it's through the skill tree. I think it's different where in Neofly, it's more the levels and the pilot experience gives me the ability to do other jobs. And once again, um, I believe I can do the certifications here, which are called qualifications in Neofly for different aircraft types uh, just by selecting those and it's supposed to then just, you know, let me borrow or, or rent me the aircraft that I need to do that. And then it just would give me instructions for what I need to do. So I'm going to definitely try to do at least one of those, well, probably just one of those over the, the trial period, just to understand how that works. But what I'm trying to, to do is get enough that I can make a decision, which goes back to what I said a little while ago, because it's kind of going to be so disjointed and probably less likely a true progression of what you'd be doing that, you know, would it make more sense with something like this that maybe I, I start over with a new series if I decide to do do that and go forward. So share your thoughts below. Look forward to hearing what people have to say. And for now, I'm going to keep flying, and I will see you in a bit. So welcome back to our flight here. You can see we're about 21 miles from the location. So in the meantime, I've been digging around. <laughs> and so it looks like there's, you know, there's always new options. So I, I don't know how I'd say it, because it doesn't have a, an L in it, but it's like aviate-type. It's, you know, I'm sure it's like a play on Aviate Life is another free option that is out there and so forth. But overall, I've just, I've been kind of trying to find discussions that I haven't seen specifically. And it seems a lot of people lean toward uh, Neofly, but that Aviate I've got mentioned, there were some others. Now, the only thing I can see is like for that Aviate I've thing... It doesn't look terribly active. Um, you know, I think they've got, like, top airlines uh, ever, you know, because you can eventually kind of create an airline there, and they've got a list of 20, and I think everything below 12 has, like, zero points. And, I, you know, I, I think the post original postings I saw were like, it, they were certainly in early 2023, so it's like a year old or, or more. But, you know, it, it's free as well. So it's one of those that, uh, like, you know, it it's, might be worth a, a, a look. But I don't know that it's going to be as smooth and slick as Neofly. So... Uh, that's the feedback I'm generally seeing from folks is that f people think that that might help. Uh, the other thing I've seen, which is unfortunate, but I, I guess expected, is it seems to be that unfortunately there's nothing. I mean, yes, this gives you a reason to fly or whatever, but there's nothing incredibly unique about these career add-ons. And so a lot of people are like, well, you know, I did it for four or five months and then 
it kind of just got into the grind. Like I had made a good amount of money. I had gotten the plane I wanted and then it just was repetitious and it got boring for them. So, you know, I think that's always the, the nature of it. Um, it was an interesting thing. I found a one discussion where people were like, you know, which one is closest to like Euro truck simulator and stuff, which I don't know if that means like, just give me random missions from somewhere or random deliveries. But, um, you know, so Neofly was again, kind of recommended for that person by someone, but, uh, yeah, it's always interesting to see what people have to say. But I did, while I was floating around, take a quick look at, at that AV8 IFE I've registered uh, just to get in. I, it's a cu very cute website. Um, you know, they, they've definitely done some things to just make it visually appealing as well. Uh, probably, uh, you know, and, and it looks like... It has a lot of variety, I'm just not sure. So that may be another one that I, I at least explore a little bit on and, you know, try to make a decision. But I, I will be upfront. Like, on air is challenging from the standpoint of the fact that it's not free and that there are a lot of other free things out there. And then the question becomes, like, so what's the real point of, of paying? Um, because even the interfaces and so forth seem pretty smooth. I, it seems like Neofly 3, I think, was a little more uh, challenging to operate, but everyone has kind of said that, you know, Neofly 4 is much, much smoother. Part of what I do, and, and it seems most people like it, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know that I'll change it, and I don't know that I could change it because it's, it's just my nature. You know, as I'm recording things, I'm just sharing what's on my mind with folks. And I think people like that openness and transparency. I, you know, it kind of creates that relationship where people feel like they're part of the conversation and, they, you know, we're interacting as you do in, in the YouTube space. where They comment and I comment back and and so forth. It It's gonna take I think I don't know about a lot I mean the, the the blessing is I suppose that you know 72 euros whatever that turns into uh, you know just the fact that I don't honestly care if it's more or less you know over two years you know I'm blessed that I, I could do that and it wouldn't really matter and you know I could give that a shot and and have it around and see how I use it this that and whatever but um so I would like to say it would take a lot for me to use a paid service when there seem to be so many options for non-paid services to do the same thing, which, again, create then don't have this barrier of, well, you know, I, I feel compelled to play because I've, I've paid. Like, it's like, all right, I get bored, I get bored, I stop. Um, where I would certainly be kicking myself a little bit, like, gee, you paid for this and, and so forth. You know, but it's it's less than half the cost of uh, something like iRacing and I, I do iRacing basically once a week and I find that worthwhile but again that is significantly different than what we're talking about here um, you know obviously iRacing very very realistic very uh, immersive and you know it just it's it's got a lot out there so it's it's kind of apples and oranges like none of these career things are that involved or or could be really i mean it, it wouldn't be realistic to have that um landing time logged 197 that's harder than the last one which is hard to believe but that's what it is all right and i may go ahead and take off uh right away so i may just go ahead and, and kind of turn around and leave myself on the runway. Engine off time logged. And there we go. The flight is finished. It has been monitored by on air. So this is what we weren't able to see. And so, you know, engine on, airborne. You know, it took a while because of some things I, I had done. Touchdown and then engine off a couple minutes. 
And so we received 78, including a 15% bonus. But then again, I assume, you know, we'll get some more info. So reputation, uh, the fact that the aircraft stalled, obviously, uh, hurt me there. So when it says the reputation changed, so I, I basically, my reputation went down. I don't know that it's telling me there. And then, yes, the aircraft handling bonus, probably because I stalled. So I'm guessing that caused me a problem. So I only got the 15% bonus instead of whatever else I would have gotten. And this is what I was curious about because it is longer than the last flight. Would my wear and tear be more? And it is. Um, so again, I kind of got into yellow with the landing G's. Landing speed was more appropriate. It's more green. It gave me kind of a regular landing. Let's see. It looks like, oh, it's just telling me regular. And then again, nothing, um, you know, terribly interesting about any of that. If I now go here, it's showing obviously that I am here with the green, the green dot. Interesting that it doesn't, I don't want to regenerate the mission, but it's interesting that it does not appear. Okay, so now it like cleared that job and now it's showing that I'm going to take cargo from there to there. And so while I got a little bit of XP, like I didn't get any money that I could see. You know, so my issue is like, you know, if I look at this, like I'm still... You know, my company value is still negative, but what I can't seem to see, what I'm looking for is where do I uh, see, so let's see, let's look at income and cash flow. All right, so cargo services, payment for cargo, that was probably the other day. Okay, so here we go, landing and parking, there we go, all right. So this is what I was looking for, all right, so 1790 was the landing fee. And so there was a parking fee. So there you go. So it's 34. And then I bought 15.4 gallons of fuel. And this is an, a more expensive rate. Like the rate in, um, I think, FS economy at least was, I was always buying under four. So this is expensive. And this isn't the challenging economy. So the real question I, I would have, certainly, and I guess it's interesting that you can export to Excel here. All right, so then let's look at the cash flow statement. All right, so this is more kind of what I would expect. So, all right, so I started with that. We bought the aircraft. Then we had a landing fee coming into our local airport. We got paid. I bought some fuel. And then the parking fee, so there you go, from 5.2 two to 2. So I, I wonder if the parking fee kind of gets charged at the first transaction at the airport the next day. So, like, if I didn't fly for a few days, so let's see. Because, yeah, it literally tracked, like, I was parked for four hours. So I'm guessing that's somewhat prorated. All right, so it won't, like, if I'm not careful, it, it wants to move things. So in that sense, like that definitely, um, you know, has to factor into things because you're, you're kind of losing money if your plane sits around. So that's where the AI pilots and things come in and so forth. But if I go to the dashboard, let's see. Okay, so my company value still went down. I'm assuming it's, you know, because I, I just haven't made enough money. I mean, well, we're going to make 22000 or something and... Although, let's see, if I go into that, all right, so this is the company value. But yeah, when the cash goes up from from what I've got in my, let's see, where am I? Still trying to get used to things here. I think I looked at, yeah, I looked at the cash flow history myself at one point. But it's not work orders. I mean, flight logs are, are one thing. You know, those are the two flights I did. So you can see an hour and 44 minutes. It took a while. Ah, so my pending jobs, that's what I want. And so at this point, now it shows delivered. And then, all right, 
So that's it's interesting. It's just it's good to see, and I you know I like the the legs. I, I might be able to do that in Neofly. I just haven't discovered as cleanly how that works. I'm gonna start working on this other leg. So we're gonna start the flight, prepare the aircraft. The normal thing, so we've got a range of 230. We don't need to go that far. Validate fuel and payload, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to fly now. And we're going to start tracking. Your flight will be monitored until you land and shut down the engines. So I'm going to get things set in the flight plan, so I'll do that off camera so that you don't have to observe me doing that again and we'll go from there all right so i think i'm all set because i've got a short runway what i'm going to do um, i'm actually going to lower the flaps down one level two but i'm going to basically get the engine spun up so that when i release the brake um, that i've got all the power i possibly can have immediately and then I should obviously accelerate as fast as possible with this plane at that point. So there we go. We should need to get to like 60 or 70. Then we should be able to get airborne. So we're getting close to the end here, but I think we're okay. There we go. Just barely. Airborne time logged. All right. And then we're going to have to basically turn around moving in this direction you can see we're kind of in line with what the flight director is telling us to do and as you can see uh, we've got 48 miles to the waypoint but we have 129 nautical miles in total so I'm gonna you know work to try to get that done all right so I ran out of fuel even though it said I should be able to go 200 miles and I had 130 I'm short by like 20 miles so lesson learned the estimates are terrible I'm trying to figure out what to do because I appear to be pretty stuck all right so I really wasn't able to find anything the pl the the game or, or the tracker for whatever reason thinks I'm in um, a certain airport basically right near where I needed to be but if I look at where my job is it's 40 miles away so basically I'm looking at traveling 40 miles to land at the airport I need to uh, but because it basically then let me spawn at this airport uh, this airport had fuel uh, I filled myself up with fuel so that I don't have this ridiculous problem again and then um, you know I'm gonna go ahead and I guess fly this but this is a, you know again I, it's a good lesson I suppose it is what it is because basically the airport I need to be at is like right right here somewhere like we're literally going by it it's probably right there the one that's visible on the horizon so we took off from there I think we need to be there but it won't let us go there because it thinks our cargo is sitting kinda where we landed and I guess it put us close to the field near the river that we dropped down and and that's kind of how it recovers because I searched everywhere in on the internet well everywhere I mean I, I searched for quite some time like I've run out of fuel mid-flight and on whoa 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 what do I do all right uh, well this is not gonna help anything but yeah in in theory I had three gallons of fuel left what ended up happening then is I started having this low vacuum problem so I guess it's kind of like when you don't have enough so the other thing is I that you need the fuel pump on all the time a lot of aircraft they have you turn it off so I'm gonna see what happens here yeah, it, it looked like I should have enough fuel, but clearly that wasn't the case. So the the rule is obviously don't don't uh, don't go ahead and and work on things with with really low fuel because it gets you in trouble. So um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to basically then land. 
unless something weird happens and it won't let me do it, um, there's no real reason to kind of show you. Because, I mean, at this point, it's telling me that I'm, like, carrying this load. I mean, it's telling me I have cargo going from where I'm at, but it, it's saying it's 2210, and then I, I don't know. But as long as I can pick this up and then continue, and the job will let me do things, I guess that will be good. And if it does, then basically we'll pick up again. We'll pick up as we're coming in to Evansville with the goal of finally finishing this job. But I suppose the goal is to learn. Uh, if I've learned nothing else, like if I do harder economy, I could only imagine what a big mess that would have been. Uh, but I was trying to save a few bucks by not flying with more fuel than I needed. I'm like, oh, I have fuel. I'll pick it up when I get to the next place after I get paid my $22,000. And instead, I had to do what I had to do. And, and the bigger problem is I created damage to my aircraft. I think I have like 7% airframe damage from the hard landing because basically I kind of did fall out of the sky. Um, I was a few, you know, hundred, I was like a hundred feet above the ground or a 200. I mean, I kind of got it in without just falling from say this level. Like I was already pretty low. I had gl glided down hoping I could maybe glide to the airport, but when it became pretty clear, because the other thing was like the engine started at some point again, like when I was, um, because I was going down, I don't know, maybe the fuel tipped forward or something and, and it worked, but, um, it's just not what I was expecting. So in any event, I'm going to do that. And unless something weird happens, the next time you're going to see me is when you should have seen me, which was coming into the airport that I'm supposed to deliver this thing to to then level up and get a job uh, you know, or, or you know get my reward and so forth so let's see how that all goes all right so this was not expected so um, I, I went from Skyline to Madisonville and it awarded me completion of my other uh, you know the, the other thing I had going on so I think, yeah, engine was already on at tracking, lights were on at engine shutdown, so yeah, um, and then I didn't do, I think I had, yeah, one stall and whatever, which I think you saw, but you can see, like, we got paid the 22,000 credits and the bonus, and, and now we're level three, but we're not where we thought we'd be, so it's a bit weird. Let me look at my aircraft. I assume it's going to tell me I'm at 2i0. Yep. And so at this point, like, I'm going to have to continue from here. If I go to my company dashboard, uh, you can see the company value is is higher. So we've got 19,000 again because we have more cash. So let's kind of take a look at what happened to us. Basically, then it gave me a landing fee at that airport. So the best I can determine is it relocates you in the world to somewhere where you can get fuel if you happen to have what happened there happen. And again, then we put in $376 of fuel. Then we had a landing fee here at 210. We got a payment. And basically, it you know, it paid us for both the passenger we dropped off earlier and the cargo. But again, it's an insane amount because if you look at the cargo transport that I did for the original one, like, it wasn't anything like that. So my next thing then is to check. So I'm wondering if there is, there might not be level three jobs. Now it might be like, well, now you're on your own. Oh no, there is a level mission here. It just took a little while. All right, so now I understand. So it is three legs, as I thought. So we've got 97, 320. Or no, I'm sorry, 130. That's total weight. So 97, 130, and 100. 
So we got two cargo and one passenger leg, and then that will give us 3,000 XP. Plus, we'll obviously get some, and we're going to get just a tiny bit more than we got, 25,000. You know, because you can see here now if I look, you know, I, I mean, I guess we have some that I can do, you know, a passenger, and I guess it's fragile or something from the airport here. You know, that would be 11,000. And instead of it being, say, 300, 400 miles, um, it's 200. But what it looks like is I need to get back to my airport. So if I look at the heading and say, hey, I'm looking for something that's more south. Like that doesn't really get me where I need. That's probably, yeah, that's closer. So I could earn 5,000, but then the other thing that I noticed, which is a bit of, I think, what some of the folks were complaining about a little bit with On Air, is that it, it became a little bit too easy to just kind of do what you wanted to do. Because here it says it's going to generate a job what well, says toward my base. So it might not do anything but let's see it might not get me right there all right well it's not going to make several refuel stops because i can get there in one i know that all right and then it looks like so yes it's taking me right there and it's just um so press delegations and then public address systems that we're transporting you know and so what i determined is i guess i can't really trust this number because that's where I had like a 217 and that last flight was only 130 nautical miles it's not like it was that close so it really should not have done that all right so basically what it was I determined is this available is telling me that you know I was over by a couple pounds. So what I did is I'm, I'm getting rid of some fuel. So once again, this is that little trade-off that you're playing because we have two passengers this time. And in theory, we should be able to take 63 pounds of cargo. So I am a little confused, but you know, maybe it's because I'm, I'm so full. So at this point, if I validate that, and then go ahead and do fly now. I should be set to go. So we'll go ahead and start tracking. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and get myself back to Murray Regional. And then my next episode will be uh, going through. And, and I'm going to get that level 3 thing done. And once again, kind of start to see. Because at this point, I don't know what the levels are giving me, to be frankly honest. Um, it's not as clear as a Neofly and so forth, but I'm going to go ahead and work on that. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to show you the 14,000 or whatever I get. It'll be, it'll be there, we'll see it in the log later, and we'll pick up next time going ahead and grabbing number three because in essence that's kind of what we should have been doing I, I guess we would have had to flown back from Evansville but I think what it, we understand now is we always need to get back to our base of operations to kind of take advantage of those other jobs and so forth so if you've enjoyed this haven't dropped a like please consider doing that if you are not a subscriber yet please consider that and I will see you next time.